number one. Yes. It is Lorcana Launch Week. It is Lorcana Launch Week. And boy, have I been, I've been making a bunch of content, uh, more specifically on my channel because of some of the stuff that I'm saying, um, but a lot of feedback, right? What kind of feedback are you getting? Because I know, one, I want to say just, I love the takes that you've been putting out, and I'm very interested to hear the kind of feedback you've been getting. From so uh, I did get my first, you, capitalism, capitalism, America, America, you must hate the USA topic. Uh, you, US, <laughs> you, USA might not be for you, bro. <laughs> exactly. I was like, really? This is where you're going to go. So I got my first uh, I hate capitalism comment, which was very, very funny. Uh, as, I really, as an owner of a small <laughs> business, that was I find that really too. hilarious. Um, I'm hearing a lot about uh, LGSs around the country ratcheting prices up on Lorcana. On Lorcana. Right. What are you it, hearing? What kind of numbers? I, I'm hearing anywhere from 160 for a booster box, which is about about 6-7% over MSRP, okay. all the way to $300 a booster box. Um, that's the number I'm hearing. I'm hearing 35 for starter decks, which is double MSRP. Which is what, seven sixteen ninety nine? Yeah. And that MSRP is printed on the package, right? Yes. And it's in all the, it's in all the documentation. Everybody knows. Well, because um, here's what gets me about that. If this is going to draw new people to trading card games and somebody comes into a shop and some mom who's never gotten a trading card game before wants to get the, the Amethyst and other thing deck for their human and they're like, you're charging me $35 for this. It says $16.99 right here on the box and the person just shrugs at them? Like, anyway. And that's, what, that's, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so I'm hearing a lot about that. So to be perfectly clear, here's our Lorcana policy. We're selling everything at MSRP. Let's go. Okay. And the reason for that is because I don't like vulture capitalism. Capitalism is fine, but there is responsible, I... ethical ways to run a business. And it's not something I'm going to participate in. I, I like refuse. that saying, vulture capitalism. Okay. I like that. That's the first time I've heard that. Because, you know, venture capitalism, of course, is, is the thing you're vulture capitalism. I like that. That's you good. know, we're, we're all circling carcasses here. I'm not oh, doing boy. it. Okay. Um, we are purchase limiting Lorcana at the store. Okay. Have you figured out what that's going to look like? It's going to look like one of each product. Cool. So that's like somebody it. wants a box, a deck, and whatever these Illumineer troves are, they yeah. could get one of each of those things? And that's it. Love it. Um, if you miss Friday, mm. I am also. So go look on Melee.gg. We're going to be running weekly Lorcana tournaments. The first tournament I'm holding back starter decks for. If you enter, it is a $25 entry. That includes one starter deck yeah. and prize support. Love it. Okay. So we are doing that. Um, one of my LGSs loves upcharging 20% above MSRP and running 10% off sales and acting like they're helping. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. We're getting a, a resupply relatively quickly. You said about three weeks? It's looking like three, four there. on the outside. Which it's confirmed shipped, I saw you say, right? Yes, so I confirmed, I confirmed the shipment from our primary distributor, who is our Lorcana primary supplier, of all of our cards, our retailer kit, and our organized play kit. I don't know what comes to the organized play kit because there's some stuff that they just haven't told us yet. Yeah. Um, they're trying, Ravensburg is trying to line this out to where they get to everybody on Thursday. Yeah. They don't want product hitting the street early. Yeah. Right? Um, I'm working on doing my best with this. Um, to anybody who happens to be watching, like, this would be a good target because obviously we had the card thefts at Gen Con, mm. right? Um, the Lorcana will not be living in the store until Friday. I'm going to take it to my house and hide it. Sure. Because Solid idea. I just, I, I am so afraid. Well, because of the speculation on it. Okay, and I'm, I'm really actually really, really afraid that something's going to happen. So I think that's reasonable. So are you, which this can just be a nice message to the community of let's all behave well. What, what are you worried about for launch with this? As a store owner with this product, what are you worried about? I'm worried about people about? rushing the door. I'm worried about people... God knows, just doing shady sure. stuff. Sure. Um, Wait, the Thunderdome. There's yeah. a mention of the Thunderdome. Thunderdome. Um, uh, my understanding is you're not using Thunderdome-style gladiatorial combat no, to determine who gets starter decks, Jess right? Jess is working on tickets Okay, love right it. now. Uh, that will be handed out at the door. Love it. Right? I like that. Um, I'm going to create two different lines, and we're just going to... We're going to process everybody in a reasonable manner, and if anybody gets out of control, I will... We'll have some issues. I think um, that's solid. And it's, you know, let's learn our lessons. Because it's, uh, to Ravensburger's credit, my understanding is day one of Gen Con, absolute mess. 
Yes. Like, and then, but apparently day two, three, and however many came Four, after yeah. that, a lot better. Better. They, they learned from it, and now we can learn from their experience, you know, is, because my understanding is we've got people within the community taking the day off. Yeah. Because uh, they know this is going to go. Uh, and frankly, I love that you all are holding things back for that event on Saturday, because I know your vision as I've chatted with you, as I've chatted with other workers here at the store, is we want people to play it. Yeah, so, so this is my thing, and this is another piece that I've said a lot in the content I've created lately. If I don't miss my bet, Ravensburger's coming for the TCG market. Yeah. And they're coming hard. Yeah. And they're specifically coming at, at Wizards. With the rules that we've talked about, the draft rules, the multiplayer rules, the products, the pricing, The pricing, et everything. The restocking. Yeah, everything. They're coming at them. Okay? I said in my thing that it is my opinion that Ravensburger is trying to re-actualize what the TCG market is. How do you mean? I'm saying with their pricing, with the way that they're doing everything, they're forcing competition in a, into a market that hasn't had a lot of competition. It's been over a decade. In a long since, time. Since, yeah. It's been, like, I remember Magic having, quote, unquote, competition when I was in high school. I graduated high school in 2007. Uh, so, you know, it's been... 15 years? Decades. Yeah. Yeah. It's since, since Magic's had a real honest competition at the table that hasn't been, like, in its own niche. You know, like we talked about how the Pokemon card game is a lot like Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Nintendo just kind of does what they, okay, the Xbox, Sony, you can do what you want. Go ahead and tell us we're not in the competition. We'll just be over here making silly huge amounts of money. Yep. You know, they have found their niche. Yu-Gi-Oh! similarly, like, has its niche. Even differently printed sized cards, you know, like literally competing in a different physical space mm -hmm. in terms of the size of the card. You know, th th this is real in terms oh, of the yeah. competition. So It's... It's coming. So this is, again, really, really interesting to me how they're structuring this. Mm -hmm. They have a heavy focus on organized play. They know that competition level play is what's yeah. going to keep this game going. Um, I think it's really, really interesting to see how they're doing this. And I'm going to be watching this very carefully over six months. Some people have been in my comments been like, it's going to be in the bargain bin by December. And I'm like, I don't think so. Based it's... on the number of... Whew. Well... And what I think what you're saying was interesting is if it is if that happens, it's because of the scalpers, mm -hmm. I think. Because if that happens, it's gonna be because people can't play it. Mm -hmm. And if they can't play it, it's gonna be because there's this revolving door of greater fools, which is an economic term, you know, it has to do with you're the person left holding the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, the everybody else is like, oop, shouldn't buy that thing, you're the one who buys it. Uh, in investment, try not to be the greater fool. It's the you know? NFT it's, thing. Yeah, ex exactly. Whoever's left holding the bag with the NFT. Whoever the or, last one who bought the NFT for five hundred thousand dollars before yeah. that thing tanked to two dollars. Ubisoft's marketplace yep. or whatever it was. Man, and, and, when you're, everybody you're the was last one holding the bag. Yep, that's and, the greater fool. And so, it, if there's that rotation of scalpers all buying it from each other, and nobody can get it to play it, that's what puts this in the bargain bin. You know, but if enough stores are doing which, and, and I say this is somebody who enjoys the shop and genuinely appreciates what you're choosing to do, uh, if enough stores do what you're doing and healthy play groups can establish and this becomes a fun game that people can come and enjoy and they can get a starter deck for their friend to try out because they get this game, play it for about three weeks, show all their friends the cards, you know, they're just playing it unsleeved on the playground outside, you know, and then people come in after that restock and they get those decks, this could go somewhere. Exactly. And that's that's really what I'm hoping is going to happen with Lorcana. Yeah. Um, do we want to do a quick bit on, because I, I went and took the 10 minutes it takes to go and watch the how to play videos. What do you think of the mechanics? As somebody who yeah. is obviously deeply steeped, you're, you're obviously a certified magic judge. You sure. know a lot about magic. You've sure. played some Pokemon, some of the other stuff. Yes. Uh, what are I your mean, thoughts on the mechanics of this game? Yeah. Uh, so, real quick rundown on the mechanics of Lorcana. Go up on the YouTube is how to play Lorcana, you know, with no cards in front of me because they won't be here until Thursday, which props to them for that. Keep, you know, do what you need to do. Basically, how Lorcana works, you've talked about this a little, it's a build up rather than a tear down. The goal of Lorcana is get to 20 lore. Your opponent is also in that race to try to get to 20 lore. Three kinds of cards, there's characters, there's items, and there's actions. 
Two of them stay on the playboard, characters and items. Actions are you use once and they go away. In games like Magic, you have resources like land. Land has to go into your deck. You use that land only to play other cards. Lorcana takes a different route. Any, almost any, I should say, almost any card in your deck, there's a little emblem that shows which ones can do this, are cards you can play and resources. Yeah, you can play because it's ink. Exactly. This is the idea. And so it's, it's your, your drawing the characters. They call them glimmers mm -hmm. uh, in, in the game. And so it's not, this is the only copy of Simba and you can't have a Simba. It's no flavor wise. This is a glimmer of Simba. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've drawn him, you know, and, and now they're here. The flexibility of that, I think, is a lot of fun. And what's clever is, especially for younger players or less experienced players, when I teach people magic, the biggest feel bad is only drawing into land. Because then they sit there and they think, I'm only drawing land. And you just have to shrug and say, yeah, that happens or in magic Or you don't draw sometimes. enough land. Exactly. And you just have to say, yep, it happens <laughs> in magic sometimes. That's a feel bad. Lorcana gets that out of the way. Now, the skill point, uh, you know, the, the kind of skill stressor there is, which of my cards should I be using for ink, which again, a resource to cast other cards, and which of my cards should I be saving to actually play and use? And that's where some of the strategy I've seen comes into play, because very powerful cards that can be used as either ink or need to be cast using ink have a high ink number. Yeah. Right? And so you're like, in this situation, do I want to save, use other ink, a bunch of small ink yeah. stuff so I can cast the big guy, or do I want to use the big guy to get a big pot of ink to cast yeah. a bunch of small stuff? Um, and so what's, what's interesting about what they've chosen to do there is they've created a new strategic complexity, which I like. I think that's a cool thing to explore. And that, that kind of goes to this as, how's the strategy level versus MTG and Pokemon? Pokemon is magic without instance in a lot of ways. So instance and magic are cards Pokemon that you can play. Pokemon has energy via vis land. Exactly. Uh, you have to, so it's very similar to Magic in that regard, and I think very telling that for a while Pokemon was made by Wizards of the Coast. Mm -hmm. It no longer is, but for a time it was. It was there with the original publisher. Yeah, and you see extremely similar DNA. Uh, and so what you've got with Pokemon is you just can't do stuff on your opponent's turn, generally. Uh, and so you're playing your Pokemon, you're putting energy on them, you're using their moves, you're using uh, what in Magic would be called like spells, like instants or sorceries. In Pokemon, they're called trainer cards. The, the most buckwild thing about Pokemon to me, there's no maximum hand size. I remember when I first started playing Pokemon with my son, because that was kind of our intro into card games as a family, I had like 20 something cards in my hand. <laughs> because there were so many draw effects. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a really cool jumping on point uh, for a lot of card games because you're only doing stuff on your turn. Do you think Lorcana is going to end up becoming more complex than Pokemon? Do you think it's going to bridge that gap? I think it could. Between the complexity of Pokemon and the complexity of Magic. Because in my opinion, and we've talked about this on the show a bunch before, sure. is how does Wizards get around the problems they've got, which is there's not, it's hard to build an entry point to Magic. Yeah. Because it looks extremely intimidating yeah, from the outside. that complexity problem. Right. And so I think that will be one of the most fascinating wait and sees for Lorcana to mm -hmm. me. Because to me, Pokemon has put itself in a space, having looked at several sets, getting the cards, looking at them over the last, call it two years. So if, if you're a Pokemon diehard and what I'm saying isn't correct, I own that. Because I've only been looking at the game for about two years. But what I've seen in the last two years of the Pokemon TCG is more of a revolving door of mechanics. For example, a lot of the chase cards in Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon card game, you have a giant one behind you right now. Mm -hmm. They used to be these Pokemon V. Mm -hmm. Those replaced Pokemon GX. And now my understanding is the game has rotated back to GX cards. Mm -hmm. It has. Magic, because of its mechanical complexity, isn't afraid to keep inventing new stuff. For example, and we may get to this, we were talking about this preview stream, Magic just announced new mechanics. There's two new mechanics in this set. Uh, Magic is comfortable with that mechanical complexity because it's kind of an in for a penny, in for a pound way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You're a Magic player. You are used to a very mechanically complex game, so we're gonna throw a couple new mechanics at you because why wouldn't we? 
Mm -hmm. It gives them a very high ceiling for the mechanical complexity that they can play around with. I'll be interested to see where Lorcana ends up. The big thing will be, based on the Lorcana cards that I've seen, again, this is just me looking at the starter deck, so if there's other cards in the set that are different, I'm not seeing stuff that lets you do things on your opponent's turn. So it's more similar to Pokemon in that regard. Okay. Uh, there are choices that get made about how you use your cards, because in Lorcana, the way that you gain lore, the way you proceed toward the end game, is your characters do what's called quest, which means you exert them, turn them sideways, and magically would call it tapping them. The symbol is literally almost identical, tapping to exerting. Mm -hmm. Magic has tapping, Lorcana has exerting. What's interesting about Lorcana is when you exert your character to try to gain lore, you also make it vulnerable. You can only challenge, which is Lorcana's version of attacking, an exerted character. Mm -hmm. So to advance to the end state, I have to make my character vulnerable to my opponent's characters. Right. So that's the interplay there. So there's a lot of interesting strategic points between do I make this card ink or do I play it? Do I exert this character to get lore or do I hold it back and keep it safe? You know, there's, there are these mechanical flex points that I think will be really interesting to see how the game plays. A lot of talk in the chat here. I'm going to let myself catch up on this a little bit. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! in the chat and things like that. Yu-Gi-Oh! is the one I don't know. I have to be humble I'm, about that. Yu-Gi-Oh! is extremely complex. Know. And it's, yeah. that one, again, has a very, high, a very high barrier to entry, right? Yeah, it's true. It's I remember really trying high. to sit down and understand what was going on with the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And you know what? Uh, magic's probably similar. Realistic. Oh, I'm sure it is. You know, it's for if for a Yu-Gi-Oh player to come in, uh, there was there was some content I saw at one point that was a magic streamer was teaching Yu-Gi-Oh players to play magic, and those Yu-Gi-Oh streamers were teaching the magic player to play Yu-Gi-Oh. And it was played kind of for jokes and whatnot. And look, both our games are silly and insanely complex and and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, it's I, I'm slightly jaded in this regard in that I've been playing magic for 20 something years. So I know it pretty well and I'm a teacher and I'm teaching magic to my son. And so I'm, I'm used to those kinds of interactions. Yeah. Uh, but with Lorcana, fairly simple number of cards or styles of cards, I should say. The decks seem pretty understandable to put together. I'll be really interested to see how the game shakes out. I think Friday and Saturday are going to be really cool. I, I really I really want to dig more into the draft rules and the multiplayer rules. Yes. Um, I, I will be really fascinated to see what that looks like. Because I, even as Magic player, I love Limited. I love Draft. Um, because I think... They it, have Sealed, too. Oh, do they? Yeah. They That's, came out with see, this is... When you Again, start doing Sealed is, and that sort of thing, you are, is, they are... You are making they some They are statements. working stuff. So. Yeah. Um, so we're at this one of, of this portion of this topic... Yeah, Lorcana's going to be in the shop Friday. Uh, tournaments are on Saturdays. We're going to run Lorcana every single Saturday. That's kind of what they want to go for. Weekly events. That's what your yep. organized play that's kit what is going to be built on. And that's what I think Ravensburg is going for. So, you know, join us for that stuff. Hey, look, you made it to the end of the video. So that means that you need to, uh, you know, like and favorite and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can find out about all the other cool stuff. And check down in the description because our address is down there. So you can come hang out with us in store. So thanks for watching the end. Bye. That's pretty good. You want me to get? Listen to it. Tell me how it sounds. Well.